What's up, everybody? If you are just getting started with the ketogenic diet or would like to know more about how to set up your macros and the foods that you should be eating, then this is the video for you. So stay tuned. We back in ketones. Are you ready to burn some ketones? Okay, let's get started. So weight loss and healing depend largely on getting the body into a negative fat fluff. So how do we do that? By burning body fat. Okay, duh. So again, how do we do that? Well, I'm going to teach you. Getting into a negative fat flux depends largely on what you are putting in, obviously. So let's start with your macros. Your macros consist of your carbohydrates, your protein, and your fat. Before we calculate our macros, I do want to recommend that you use an app. That way it is easy to track. It will calculate them for you, and it will just take a lot of confusion off the table. And if you aren't already using one, I recommend you use Chronometer. Chronometer is what I use, and I love it because not only does it track your macronutrients, it also tracks your micronutrients, which is a very important part of this diet or should be of any diet, right? Mm -hmm. So Chronometer makes it easier by doing that for you. So every time that you log food, it's going to calculate how many vitamins, if any, minerals, if any, electrolytes, if any. Grab that app if you haven't already used one or if you're looking for a better one. Okay, so macros. In order to stay, get into ketosis and stay there, carbohydrates needs to be at about 20 to 30 grams per day. I know this may be difficult in the beginning and don't beat yourself up if it takes some time to get there. Just know that that is the goal that you are trying to reach, 20 to 30 grams per day. Next is protein. Protein should be calculated based on your body weight. And if you have an app, like I mentioned earlier, it will do that for you. But in case you're wondering, to get your protein goal, you take your body weight minus your body fat and you subtract that by 0.8. It is important that you meet that goal every day, or at least by the end of the week, you have averaged to meet that every day. The reason why I say that is because protein preserves muscle lean mass, it repairs muscle, and it builds muscle. So you wanna make sure that you are getting that protein in every single day. So this may take some getting used to, but I promise that it gets easier as time goes on. And give yourself some time to get used to it. Don't, don't be too critical of yourself in the beginning. So next we have fat. If you get your carbs and protein right, then you can kind of play with fat a little bit. And let me explain to you what that means. So to get the body into a negative fat flux, we, it has to burn body fat. So let's say that my goal was 100 grams per day of fat. If after a couple of weeks, I'm not seeing any improvements or weight loss, I can take that back about 20 grams, 20 to 30 grams, but not too much because you wanna make sure you're getting that dietary fat in for hormonal development and nutrient absorption. So I take that fat back 20 to 30 grams. And, and then once I start seeing an improvement in my weight loss, I would increase that back up to 100 grams. And like I said, it, it kind sometimes in the beginning, depending on how much metabolic damage you have or what's going on, it, your body almost kind of, you can look at it as kind of needing a little kickstart. And it's definitely okay to do However, just make sure that you do increase your fat back up to your goal once you start to see improvement. Now, in the first couple of weeks, you're not going to want to decrease your fat. You should even want to increase it because since your body, since you are dramatically decreasing your carbs down to 20 to 30 grams, you need some sort of energy source. And since your body is not efficient at burning fat as energy, you need to add dietary fat so that way you can burn that off. And that will help with you know, low, any low energy moods, focus, etc. It doesn't mean that you get to escape all of those things, but it will definitely help mitigate with against them. Okay, so now that we have our macros, let's put it all together. We have our app, we're gonna input our macros, and then after a couple of weeks, if we're not seeing any improvement, we're gonna keep our carbs and protein the same, but we're gonna adjust the fat a little bit just to get our body into fat burning. Hopefully this will help. So next we're gonna talk about what it is that we should be eating. So what your body, what you need to be eating is nutrient dense foods that come from animal meats and vegetables. The vegetables should be those cruciferous vegetables, dark leafy green vegetables, you know, broccoli, kale, spinach, Brussels sprouts, and you get it. <laughs> uh, your meats, any animal meats, um, chicken, you know, beef, pork, fish, all that. 
not only do, do the animal meats provide you with the protein that you need to get, but also fats and nutrients. So make sure you're getting in enough meats. Make, also, make sure you're getting in about seven to 10 cups of vegetables per day. I know this might seem like a lot, but when it's really kind of the only thing you should be eating right now, it's, does, it's not that much. And you can break that up, let's say, between lunch and dinner. So when should you be eating? You want to reach towards eating right now only breakfast, lunch, and dinner. If you are struggling, then you can add more fat to keep you fuller between meals and really track when you are eating so you can narrow down what you need to focus on. Now I want to tell you what you shouldn't eat, and that is packaged foods. Try, try to stay away from packaged foods right now as you are getting familiar with this diet. Re, you know, eat, trying to figure out if you can eat this or eat that can be really confusing and really frustrating. And most of the things out there, especially that say sugar-free, are not good for you. In fact, you might end up with more worse problems than you started with. So just for now until you get familiar with the diet and your body and how your body's healing and what it needs, stick to the things that you know it needs, and that is meats and vegetables. Then you can move on to, you know, the more complicated things. All of this is temporary. It's just, it's a huge change on your body. It's a short amount of time compared to the benefits that last can last a lifetime, I promise you. Lastly, but really important, it's very important to make sure you're getting your electrolytes, that you're getting your potassium, your sodium, and your magnesium. If you at any time start to feel any heart flutters, um, achiness, muscle cramps, you know, extreme, you know, exhaustion or, you know, low energy, you need to increase your electrolytes. You should be getting four grams of sodium per day, which is 4,000 milligrams. You should be getting 4.5 to 5 grams of potassium or 4,500 to 5,000 milligrams and 400 to 800 milligrams of magnesium. Let me tell you where the, these will be found. Sodium is you can get from Himalayan salt or sea salt, which I highly recommend getting anyway. Throw out your table salt today and go get some Himalayan salt or sea salt. It doesn't matter which. That not only does it have the sodium that you need, but it also has 84 other minerals. Another source is bone broth. Not only does it have the sodium in it, but it has other healing properties that, to heal things like leaky gut, which will really help your body into uh, burning fats and healing itself if that's one, something that you're suffering from. So, okay, so now for potassium. Potassium you're, you can get from your red meat. 4,500 milligrams or four, 4.5 grams, it can be difficult to reach every day. If you're not able to get that from, you know, your meats and veggies, then it is okay to supplement with 99 milligrams twice a day. However, if you do have blood pressure, please check with your doctor first as it can interfere with some of these medications. But hopefully you won't need them soon. <laughs> so lastly is magnesium. Magnesium is also in the salt and and some of the vegetables. Magnesium is also can also be difficult one for not only for us to absorb but to get in every day. I use magnesium oil. I love it because it's easily absorbed through the skin and it almost it works almost instantly. Okay, so we have set up our macros, we know what foods to eat and we know to make sure that we get in our electrolytes. I know that there's a lot of information out there that has made this confusing that it needs to be so I hope this helps you and you're able to get started. Thank you again for watching my video today. I hope it was super helpful. This is part one of a three-part series of developing a well-formulated ketogenic diet plan. The second part's going to include the three phases of becoming keto adapted and what happens in each of those phases and how long it could possibly take and why. So please subscribe so you don't miss out.